Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT, or at least we will, will be in a moment, and we're continuing building the Curse of Strahd. So in the previous video, um, not the previous one, actually the previous Curse of Strahd video, we created our first kind of encounter scene, which is the mysterious visitors where they meet the Vistani and get that background story and are encouraged to go to help. Now in the original module, and the idea is is that they agree to go with the Vistani and the Vistani uh, escort them into uh, into Ravenloft. So in that, um, they are traveling through this on the right hand side, this area A, and then through the gates of Ravenloft, past area C, along the old Svalich Road, through a Barovia, across the bridge, and all the way to area G over here. And they're escorted the whole way. And then they get to meet the, the Gypsy Queen. And, and they have their discussions and things. I don't want to do that though. Because I'm intending my characters to be starting probably at first level. Um, and they need something to kind of start engaging them. So I want them to do the Death House first. And I've got the Death House as being just outside the village of Barovia. So what I want is they will have that encounter um, and they will be told where to find the Gypsy Queen um, but won't actually be escorted. So they will head off by themselves through part A, B to the gates of Ravenloft, through the woods themselves uh, until they reach the village of Barovia where they will be forced <laughs> because um, the wonderful thing about Ravenloft is there are really good tools that make sense to be able to force people to do certain stuff the fog um, so they'll be forced to deal with the um, the death house first and then they're straight into the village so they will still know that they've got to continue but then the story takes on its own now one of the reasons i want to do that a because i need to need to give them a level or two by doing the death house but b i want their introduction into um barovia to be um I want them to be on their own. I want them to start feeling helpless, that there is no way back. As they're going through the woods, the, the wolves are out there, it's dangerous, it's it's gritty, it's dark, it's miserable. I want them to get that feeling as soon as possible. Um, it's one of the reasons why the Vestani camp is going to be quite lively and bright, even if the Vestani themselves are somewhat dour individuals. Okay, right, so for this video what we're going to be creating we're going to be creating our next scene again using that theater of the mind type of style so there will be a bit of repetition of th things we've done before um, but as we start doing more and more scenes that are almost exactly the same as what we've done before i'll start doing those off camera but in this one what i want to cover is a b and c uh, until they pretty much get right up and their last scene is going to be arriving um, basically just on the outside of the village where the death house is. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so I've prepared some scenes, um, just some pictures and images we've got, uh, just AI generated. Um, here's a nice one. Now, AI keeps wanting to put proper roads in, uh, but looking at this one, this absolutely, this rutted, it can be cart tracks and things like that. So I wanted to start giving them that feeling that the the woods are against them <laughs> so i've got another one here that's slightly different now this one does look a little bit more like a road um but I mean, will they were they mind will they really matter i oh, don't know uh the gates of barovia i've got this um and i've already smoothed off those edges so we got rid of that rough edges issue that we had um and my final one of barovia the village coming into sight as they come out of those woods um, and a couple of other images that we'll do as we go. I also found some um, some sound files that we can add in there. I mean, you can see here they're called Wolf Howl, three different versions, uh, and a uh, a wind kind of effect. Foom. Right. Okay. So back over here, let's get started. Um, need to create a completely new scene then for this, and this is going to be the. Uh, now I need to check that I've actually spelt that correctly, of course. Uh, Svalich. Yes, I have. Points to me. <laughs> I'm always surprised when things go to plan. 
Um, right, so showing navigation, yes, for me, but not for the players. Correct. Background image, and this is where I'm going to go into my maps and cursor strad. And I think I think I'd already actually uploaded it. Let's check uh, duh, 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 all these images that you're familiar with, you've seen before. At some point, I'll have to go through and get rid of the ones we're not using. Did I upload it? Did I? Did I? Yes, I did. Okay, so we're going to have that one there. Um, let's save that and switch over to this straight away. Okay, so obviously we've got a grid on here to start with. We're going to get rid of that. So setting this up, let's um, make sure we've centered that. Nice. Uh, this background color, uh, I mentioned in the previous video about um, keeping that background color a bit brighter until we came into Ravenloft. So now I want that to be a bit more, a bit darker and not providing light for them. Okay, let's make it gridless. Um, I'll keep my padding as it is. Lighting wise, we're not putting tokens on anymore or not for this, not, certainly not this stage, though I want global illumination. Um, ambience, no. I will want some ambience, but if you saw what was the previous video looking at the FX Master, um, there are other ways that we can deal with our weather rather than using this. So that's what I want to play with. Okay, so we can get rid of that grid. We've got this darker background. Um, that's much nicer. Okay, like this. So uh, we start off with basically a description of walking along this path um, and not an awful lot kind of specifically happening. It's about setting the scene. It's about talking about this getting darker. But of course, we do have ability to, uh, da, 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 where was it, under lighting, we can set, if I move this now, we can set this darkness level as we go along. So it's very possible to, as they slowly move, through this area it slowly gets darker and darker until it gets to a point and we can add on mist as they go as well so it slowly gets darker slowly gets mistier until they get to uh, the gates of Barovia themselves all right so um, we're going to start with this but as they start that journey I'm going to need a couple of buttons one of those buttons is going to be for describing or rather for bringing up um, when we get to the gates of Barovia, that's going to be kind of the first thing that they find. So let's do that. And there's not going to be a huge amount of tiles on this one. Uh, we haven't got the story to tell in the way that we did before. Um, giant, as always, let's uh, shrink that down. Okay. Uh, now you you could you know you could say, oh, I'm going to going to try and get the tile so it merges in. It looks like it's at the end of the road. I'm not going to do that. It's never going to look good. I don't think. So I'm not going to even attempt it. Uh, I'm going to have it deliberately off to one side, um, so it that they see it. It catches their eye, but they don't think anything particularly strange of it. All right. So let's pop that there. Uh, what I will do is, of course, copy and paste because I'm going to use a version of this as my trigger. So that I know that this is the button to press to bring this image in. So this image itself, are we happy with the setup of it? Um, I don't think there's anything we need to do on here. No animations or anything like that. We don't need to worry about triggers. It's not an active tile. Let's turn that off, which is good. Um, and of course, it's going to start hidden. So this one for the active tile then. Um, don't need to worry about any of this stuff here but we do want to go to our triggers so active yes this trigger is active but only for the GM and when they click it okay so allow when paused uh, yes um, we don't need sight again I know I'll be clicking it as the DM which overrides some of those things but it's force of habit um, because it has become habit now <laughs> we've been we've been playing with foundry long enough that some of those things have indeed become habit all right so when we click that button um, we're going to toggle this so it will toggle it on toggle it off again and I do like the effect we're using of having that bit of delay on these tiles and bringing them in so let's just check that we're happy with this if we click this button it's going to come into the scene there we go and then when I click the button again it's going to fade out now I think that worked well for the other images but I'm not convinced that five seconds is is right for this let's make it three so it, it pops in a little bit quicker I have to actually select the button of course 
pops in a little bit quicker, it gives us our story. Now, the interesting thing is, I've just realised we've not got our soft edges on here at all, have we? That's not got soft edges. Okay. <laughs> Has it, for some reason, it picked up the um, the original image, not the new one with the fluffy edges. Uh, so that's Gates of Bravia 2. Oh, right, okay. Um, I want that one. Because it's reasonably subtle, I just kind of hadn't noticed. Right, let's bring that in again. There we go. Oh, that looks so much nicer, doesn't it? Just with that, that slightly fuzzy edge, it kind of like looms out of the gloom. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the way some of these bushes and things actually just happen to match in quite well. And then we can fade that out again. So that works quite nicely. Much nicer way to do that. All right, so that's our very first image. We talk about that. Um, but what if we want to put some effects that come with it? So I want to increase the... Um, increased weather as we go so i'm going to move this down a bit and i'm going to create in i'm going to create a new tile here okay oh i'm so useless sometimes <laughs> i'm going to create a new tile here that is going to start making effects for our weather Ooh, at least that's the plan this is not something we've done before hence actually recording on the video all right so let me first of all uh what is it we're going to want it to do so we're going to want triggers so we want this to be active for the gm to be able to do when they click it um and now we're paused and turn that one off of course uh, and some of the actions the things we're going to want to do here is we're not going to be showing a tile or anything we're going to want to uh, change that lighting so i wonder where that exactly is we'll find it don't worry um, and we're also going to want it to change some weather effects. So, um, not global volume. Apologies for any noise you can hear in the background. Pets are going a bit nuts. Um, do, 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 do not reset fog of war. There should be scene lighting. There we go. Okay, so this is where we can adjust that darkness level. So, it's going to be darkness of zero. We can change that darkness to 0 0.1 over a period of a little bit of time. In fact, we can probably go as far as point two so that's one thing we can absolutely do so let's check and see if that is giving us the kind of darkness that we want so as we move on we click this and we should see very subtly it got a little bit darker right so almost imperceptibly so um, of course I haven't got a reset on that so I need to manually reset that back now, what I also want to do is when I click that is bring in some weather effects. How the heck are we going to do that? So this is learning <laughs> for once. <laughs> We're going to learn something. All right. So going to uh, FX Master, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to be bringing in some weather effects here. I'm pretty sure it's this one. I'm pretty sure this is how we're going to do it. And we want some fog. Um, let's say we want to put that on and save changes. Uh, we want to check how much fog we're introducing here, whether we're happy with it. That's quite foggy quite quickly. So I might turn down the density of that. Let's see what happens. And it's going to take a few seconds to kind of clear and change. There we go. You can see it's less dense now. It's more like a mist, isn't it? Um, in fact, I might even turn that down slightly more because, again, I want it to be incremental um, so they barely notice. All oh, right. Okay, that's pretty good. I think that's that's kind of how we want it. It's nice and subtle. We can turn that off. We can turn that back on again whenever we want, which is good. Now, how do we turn that into something that we can then program um, as part of our button? Well, if you were watching my mouse pointer, I kind of gave it away. <laughs> On the left-hand side over here, as one of these options under FX Master, we have, look, Save Particle and Filter Effects as Macro. So clicking that, you see there's a blue thing that's come up here that says Macro Particle Effect Fog has been saved. So let's go to this folder, bottom left-hand corner, down next to the players. This is tiny. 
tiny little folder. And if we open that, oh look, we've got a particle effects fog in here. Um, it's created that as a macro. So what it's done is it looked at all of these effects that we've got active, whether it's, you know, we might have rain and fog and light, lightning and spiders running across the screen or whatever it is. It's taken all of those and it's created for us. If I, um, oh, let's drag it down onto the, the bar down here. If I edit this macro, it's a little bit small. Uh, you can see that it's actually FX Master, it's saying type fog with the various options we've selected. Um, so when I execute this macro, it's going to do that for us. Now I'm going to um, uh, I'm probably going to create a macro for each of these scenes because I want to slowly increase that fog. So uh, let's call it COS fog and we've got this at um, 002 okay so the density is 002 so if we want to have this really light fog again at any point this is the script we can use we don't need a new script for it but we're going to have lots of different levels of fog and a lot of most of them are going to be much heavier all right let's save that macro um, just going to edit that macro make sure I know what it's called so Curse of Strahd, Fog 002. Brilliant. All right. You keeping up? I mean, the advantage you guys have got is just rewind the video and watch it again. <laughs> okay, right. So let's select this, this tile here that is going to change our scene lighting. And we can now add another action on here. And we should have... Uh, do, 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 is it Run Macro? Run Macro. Uh, select Entity. Oh. Uh, 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 oh, I don't, <laughs> mm, okay, stuck already. Um, we might, do we need an entity to run it on? I wonder how we do that. Okay, let's run macro. Uh, this is saying use current collections. Okay, whatever that means. Um, uh, no, oh, 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 stupid boy. Okay, is it telling me, is it asking me which macro to run? Of course it is stupid boy okay this is why we do it it's the first time we've done something like this or this particular way of doing it so there we go we're going to select entity which is the macro we want to run we don't need to put any arguments into it and we're going to run it as the gm we should be able to click update we can close this and now when we click our tag it should bring in our mist and um, and change the lighting level. So before I do that, let's go to configure, make sure our lighting level is where it needs to be and make sure we haven't got anything on. And uh, we, well, it won't be an immediate change because it's gonna come in fairly slowly. Let's, we've got a little bit of mist over here. We can see a light bit of mist and indeed it's slowly got slightly darker. So we can incrementally make this slightly more creepy. Um, now, we may not, until we hit the gates of Ravenloft, we may not need, need any more mist than this. This might be fine. But you can see how this works. Um, I think it's, again, it's about creating a bit of atmosphere. Um, just while we're doing, you know, we're doing other stuff, we're discussing it, they're moving along um, the area. Now, to turn that off, can I just... because I'm wondering, clear particle effects, I can literally press, there we go, okay, so yeah, changing it through there isn't gonna work, but I can literally just go to clear particle and filter effects and it will just, they're gone straight away, that's fine, easy peasy, but I would need to reset the lighting levels manually. Now, they're only gonna, running as a player, or running it as the, you know, actually four players, we're only going, they're only gonna be down this particular part of the road once. So I'm not going to have to worry about, you know, oh, hang on a minute, I've got to reset everything repeatedly. That's not going to be a problem for us. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to create another one here. And for this one is going to do exactly the same. Um, so all of this is the same, but for the actions, I'm going to make that slightly slightly darker again so it's going to slowly do um, and I might go back to my effects 
uh, I might go back to my weather and I may well go to back to my fog, put that on. We did it at 002 before. Whoops. Might do just up it slightly and see how that again I don't want to introduce really thick fog really really quickly I just want it to be misty yeah so that's a fair bit more misty without it being overwhelming um, and we can make it slightly slightly uh, transparent there all right so I'm happy with that so again on the left hand side save particle filter let's call it particle effect fog we can go back into here see I've now got another version of this open that edit macro now this one is going to be called can you guess c o s fog 004 because i'm picking that 004 up from the density i'm using so it just gives me an indicator is the higher that number is the more dense that fog is just because my poor brain can't cope otherwise okay good now i need to keep that open don't i <laughs> so that when i go to my tile double click this uh, I've done my lighting, but the macro I want to run this time is that one there. And again, I'm going to run it as GM. Easy peasy. So very, very simple tile triggers that, of course, pressing this top one. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Uh, sorry, got distracted. Brain went somewhere else. Pressing this top one is going to make it slightly lighter. Uh, and then when I press the bottom one, it's then going to switch over. It gets slightly darker again. And we've still got all those mist effects. Let's make sure we've cleared those mist effects from the scene to start with. Let's put that lighting back up to full so we can see that. So the idea is, is as they're starting to walk along here, we're going to click that first one. They won't even really notice much has happened, but very subtly um, it's going to slowly get a little bit darker and we should see just it's coming in from the right hand side and this time we've got a little bit of mist kind of beginning to float across the scene and they're going to continue along there probably nattering away not paying too much attention and then we can click this again um, and it gets slightly darker slightly more dreary and the mist gets slightly thicker uh, and then of course at some point they will get to the actual gates themselves and we can click our button and we're describing that they arrive at those gates and we can bring that image forth but we've still got the mist and everything going on and then once they are moving on from that if necessary we can just click that and it hides it so good so what happens once they get past the gates um oh no just a point on that so what happens if the party go, no thanks for Stani, I don't want, <laughs> we don't want any part of your problems. That's not our problem. Sorry, quick sip of tea. Um, yeah, what are we, we going to do? Well, the great thing about Ravenloft is it does have those railroading tools that make sense, the, the fog. So one of the other um, ways to get them into Ravenloft is basically whatever they're doing, a fog arises and when the fog clears, they're in Ravenloft. That's it. Bam, you've got no choices. Um, but I can still use this scene for pretty much anywhere they go. If they're going through anywhere that's slightly wooded, I can still use this scene. Um, and as they make progress, suddenly, hang on a minute, well, 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 the mist is coming in, it's damp and everything else. And it can still transition. They find themselves at these gates. Now, if they decide that they don't want to go through the gates and try to back off, that is where you can use that Ravenloft fog to go, hmm, okay. Yep, the fog is really thick and they end up getting turned around and they keep ending up back at the gates. So they end up with no choice, really, either to starve to death outside the gates or to go through the gates. So you can actually railroad them and it makes sense in this instance. So railroading is generally bad. In this instance, it's good. It gets them moving. <clears throat> right, sorry about that squeaky voice. Okay, right, so what have we got now? Uh, we're going to be the other side of the gates. So this might be where I want to change my scene image. Um, so I'm going to create a new tile. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, I'm going to create a new tile. Sorry, I'm thinking. Braining is hard. Um, you notice I'm not putting any images on these. Um, I probably will at some point. But I'm just literally putting them in the order that I need to run them. Uh, and of course, because I'm running it, I'll know what they are. All right, so triggers that I want in this one then. Again, 
it's going to be active only when the GM clicks on it. Um, and it can run well paused, of course. Now I'm going to do some, not images, I'm going to do something that I haven't done before um, just because it's worth testing these th things out. What I want to do is change the scene image. So this map on the background, the main scene image. Um, so is that change scene image? Did I see that? Change scene background? I think that might be what is select a scene well this scene and the new image I want to use is going to be I don't think I've uploaded it so that's the one we're using right now um, but I want it to transition over to this other one it's almost exactly the same but it's not um, so let's give that a go and see if this actually works as is suspected so this is our background scene and yes so it will change that background scene for us which is nice uh, I need a button to set it all back don't I? <laughs> okay let's carry on uh, you don't need to watch me do a button to change that back again all right so it can change to this scene um, in the background that's no problem at all it's going to keep our weather effects and everything on because it's the same scene Okay, in fact, look, can I... Do you know what? I'm going to have to create a button to undo that, um, or otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to create a button at the top here, and this is going to just reset everything back to how I want it. Um, okay, so set up uh, GM only when they click on it. Uh, what we want it to do... Yeah. GM only when they click on it. No, Oh, I see. Thank you very much. GM only... Oh, it's because I've created a new tile. Stupid boy. It's just misclicks. Misclicks. Okay, actions. What I want it to do is I want to reset the uh, now the lighting level. Where was that? The scene lighting. I'm going to set that back. And I'm just going to do it over uh, just over two seconds because it's resetting our scene for us. Um, is that a macro? Uh, sorry. Under here, save particle filter effects, but clear particle filter effects. Is that is that a macro? Is that a macro we can find? Uh, we haven't got a folder for it. Hmm. Can we? Sorry, again, not always sure what I'm doing. Can I turn that off? Save that as it is. Can I create a macro? Particle effects has been saved. Oh, blimey, which one was it? Hang on. Let's delete. Let's delete. Right. Now if we save particle effects, we know we've got the right one. What does this actually give us in this macro? Literally nothing. I wasn't sure if it would if it would reset if you if it would give you a macro straight away that just resets it. Um, which would be nice. I mean we have got the button over there, it's not a big deal. Uh, not that one, that one. Yes, get rid of them. Yes, yes, I know I clicked it multiple times. Stupid boy. <laughs> okay, so we want to reset the lighting and stuff like that. But also, I want to change that scene image, wasn't it? Uh, scene background. <laughs> oh, for this scene, and I want to change it back to our original one. Uh, the road number one, not... Road number, no, I've got road number two, not road number one. All right, let's do that. Create that tile. Click that tile. Brilliant. Okay, it's going to set us back. Uh, just need to move this tile somewhere slightly more useful. Let's just stick it up there. Okay. All right, so now we can indeed do our various things, um, and then we can reset it back to where we want it to be. Okay, good. Uh, and of course, if we've got effects on, we can just clear them. Job done. All right, good. Right, sorry about that. Okay, so when we do transition to the new scene, um, this is where we can do a couple of other things as well. So on this one here, we're going to transition to that new background. I also want to make sure um, that we do show hide and hide that tile 
even in theory it's already hidden but i just want to make sure that 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 definitely does get hidden when we change that scene once we're through the gates okie dokie so beyond the gates we're going to have this new image for us we're not going to have the gates of ravenloft tile that's going to have disappeared um, what we do want to do is to make sure we've got that um, that macro running for the weather so even though it's already it it'll already be running so i don't need to do that that's fine okay there's a bit here about um about us as they're walking through the woods um there is a smell that they find so um we are going to create a new tile obviously we can't do smells <laughs> we're going to create a new tile uh, and upload my dead messenger one uh there you are and i'm going to bring that in so again ai generated really nice i say nice it's got a corpse in it a nice kind of image that we can use for this um which basically just shows us this corpse in a ditch that they're going to find and we can kind of pop that there and it, it almost blends in with the road that we've got which is actually quite nice i wasn't expecting it to do that but now i'm putting it on here look at that yeah that's that's all right i quite like that i'm surprised by that <laughs> okay i'm going to copy and paste so i can use this as the activation tile over here um, and they're going to be looking at that now one thing i haven't done when we change scene here i do want it to do something else i wanted to play some sounds so if i go to my playlist here i've got a playlist uh background forest with this wind sound ambient noise on it uh, if i play that um, i'll be quiet for a second hopefully you can hear it it's quite subtle i'll have to always as always i'll have to chain play with the volume to make sure it's right um, but it's just going to be there in the background quite subtle they might even miss it at first a bit like the changes in light and stuff i want that to be introduced right so i'm going to stop the sound right now so it doesn't annoy the cack out of you guys so part of this trigger when we change that scene i need to add on that i want it to play is it going to be P for play? Oh, playlist. Yes, it is. <laughs> playlist. Uh, the forest. Um, I want to, and I want to play, uh, and it's going to tell me that I control the volume from here, which is fine, and I definitely want it to loop. So I'm going to put that down to 0 0.5, um, and I'll play it in a few moments, um, so that when I watch the video back, I'll be able to give a, have a really good indication of how loud that is compared to my voice so that when i'm running the game i'll know is that actually background noise or is it drowning anything out okay good click that good so that's all part of that button there changes that i mean obviously we don't have this in there and you can hear that that kicks in so what i do want to do on my reset button here is i probably want to make sure it's stopping playing sounds as well uh, these so I often don't do these on <laughs> on camera, but just putting these buttons in allows me to reset it, which means I can uh, I can just check things. Uh, is it going to be stop sound? Yes. Um, this tile, this use this tile. Uh, stop sound. Well, I want to stop. Yeah, um, that's not what I want at all, is it? Uh, maybe it's not stop sound maybe it is playlist again not play sound file uh, playlist oh of course stupid boy it's right there isn't it instead of play stop <laughs> it's just so obvious when you know okay good so we can start and stop that whenever we like all right now back to this button here um, so once we change scene we should get that come in um, and once we click this one over here on the left hand side again we don't want it on enter we want it when we click by the GM it's active it can happen when paused again don't need to do that GM can activate it anyway um, and the actions we want to do is very similar to what we've done before we're going to do a show hide um, on this tile here and we're going to toggle it and we're going to bring that in over about three seconds all right 
Now, what else do we want to do? Um, the weather effects in theory should still be running. Do we want to perhaps change the fog again? I'm going to say no. We don't want to overuse the fog more than we already are. We don't want to lose um, the images that they can actually see. So they're going to do that. But I do want it to play a sound file. Uh, duh, 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 which is what I clicked on, play sound file, and the file I'm going to want is, in fact actually, I should be creating it as a playlist, because I've got several wolf sounds. Let's do that, update that tile, get rid of it. Create a playlist called Wolves, it's Ravenloft, we are going to use it again. Uh, sequential, we can shuffle tracks, um, no, I'm going to do it sequential to start with, um, and we can just do this. Um, we can import the uh, cursor strad. Let's do a new folder. Where's the new folder? Uh, hello? Oh, I see. I see. I see what it's doing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> right. Delete that sound. That's not what I want. So I'm going to manually add my sounds to this, which is fine. Uh, this is going to be Wolf 1. Let's find that. Uh, choose my file, um, which is Wolf 1. Brilliant. Select that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Fine. Update that. Just make sure it's showing in this list. We're going to add another one. We're going to call this Wolf 2. Is this painful watching me fumble? <laughs> Wolf 2. Uh, we're going to use that one. Thank you very much. We're not going to repeat these. And then I want Wolf 3. Now, if I've ordered these correctly, which was my plan, I bet you I haven't, but my plan was they should actually get slightly louder as we play them. Um, okay. So here's Wolf 1. So it's a lingering howl quite distant. Wolf 2. Significantly closer. And Wolf 3. Probably somewhere in between them. But the first one is much further away. And that's what I wanted to use. So uh, this trigger again, back to here. Sorry, a bit all over the place. You can tell that I, you know, I'm doing this with you. Um, it's not a case of uh, I've planned all this out and got a script to follow and everything else. Because, like, you know, that'd be boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> Don't play sound. I want it to now play from the playlist. That playlist is Wolves, um, and I want it to play. It's going to play the whole lot, isn't it? Because it's just keep going for the playlist. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, well, let's find out. Let's update that. Let's click Update Tile and try it. it yeah, so it does, understandably, being a playlist, it will go on and play the rest of them. And I don't want it to do that at this point. So, easy peasy. Playlist is not the one I want to use for this. I am going to get it to play sound file, and I just want it to play Wolf 1. Uh, for everyone, I'm going to leave it at that volume. I'm going to control volume from over here rather than from here. Loop, no, fade, restrict to scene. Uh, everybody will be here anyway, but if anybody is... No, I'm not going to restrict it to scene, because it's possible one of the players is looking at the landing page. Um, and I want them to hear that because that will draw them back into what's going on here instead. Uh, prevent sound from playing if already playing. Uh, yes, we don't want it echoing over itself. And delay actions until finished. Uh, no, I'm happy with that. Okay, so yes, when they arrive on this scene, we'll be able to click this. And I will be describing the fact that as they find this body, they hear this howl in the distance. That's how I'm going to be doing that. Now the idea is, is that they need to jolly along fairly quickly. Yeah, if I click it to fade out again, it, it, I get a second howl. 
which is fine. Um, yeah, the idea is is they need to jolly on pretty quickly out of the woods from this point. And if they hang around too far, they will be attacked by wolves. So I need uh, a couple of other tiles here, just really basic ones, that are going to act as that uh, that bit of pressure on them to get them moving their backsides along. So again, it's just going to be GM only. The only actions are going to be uh, to play that sound file for uh, whichever one I want. Let's uh, start with Wolf 3. Okay, so no fade loop, uh, restrict a scene, no prevent if already playing, yes. Uh, play for everyone, update. Okay, so that one's going to be our next one. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste that for our third one here. Uh, and this one is going to be doing exactly the same, except I'm just going to change which and do um, the second wolf howl. That's it. Okay, so I can reset, uh, go back to my original seen what we should be able to have here so we're pretty much at the end here now which is great i've just got one thing to do one transition over is um when we start the scene we're going to be able to click this button here which is going to start changing our lighting and our weather pattern slightly a bit of mist comes in um, we can then click another one which again makes it slightly again you, you've got these shadows of these other bits but they will disappear um, we can then, they approach and reach the gates of Ravenloft, which fade in on the right hand side so they can see that. We can click that again for it to go. We can click our next one. It's not smooth, is it? A transition between the two is not smooth. It'd be nice if we could find a way to make that gently. But when we come to this one, we've now got that background noise going on as well we've still got our fog playing which is good um, then they can smell this rotten stuff and if they choose to investigate they will indeed stumble across this body um, that they will investigate now if they stumble across that body they are going to find a letter on that body um, which is a messenger which if we go back to the landing page is one of these letters here Let me set this. So they'll find one of those letters that now will appear on the front here that they can read, which is pretty good. That's how I wanted it. And of course, once they've finished with that and they start to move off, they can begin to hear the wolves um, in the background slowly getting closer, um, slowly becoming more problematic. That's not played that wolf noise. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Um, right, let's have a quick look at those triggers. Actions, I suspect it might be because if there's a sound or if there is a sound already playing, it might be what it's doing. And of course, we're playing the background one, so let's update that. Same with this one. Update this one. Update this one as well. Play sound. Do that. Da -da 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 -da. And we just check these last two. Why are they not working? How strange that that doesn't want to work. Oh, very strange. What is going on there? Play it for everybody. Pick the right sound. Uh, restrict a scene. We said we didn't want to do that. Why does it work for the first one, but not this one? Let's just check. So that one was wolf three. click isn't on there that's why so i'm not activating the tire when i click it okay there we go <laughs> it's always something slightly silly isn't it so this is going to be the same problem with this one is that set up i just for some reason missed that click there brilliant good and then, yeah, suddenly it's a bit more worrying they're much much closer all right so the last thing that's going to happen here for this scene is they approach the village of uh, Barovia. So I need to just bring in one last tile here. I need to upload my image which is going to be this. Now rather than, because the transition isn't as pretty as I want it to be, um, rather than have it, um, there we go. 
rather than have it switch scene, I'm just going to have this as a complete tile. Oh, it has come in exactly the right size. Brilliant. I'm going to have this as a complete tile that just shows over the top of the entire rest of the scene. Let me make this quite a bit stupidly big. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down here. Um, and that is going to just come in as a tile, nice and simple. Um, triggers are going to be, as we know, I hope that background wind isn't too bad for what you can hear right there. Drowning me out too much. Uh, so the actions are going to be, when we click that, all it's going to do is quite simply uh, show, hide this tile going to show it um, and we can fade this in okay so let's give it five seconds and that should work just peachy uh, as long as we have it started off here. okay so we've got our howls and things and then for that last transition we can click this one and it will bring that tile in as they approach it it's a nicer transition than the way we did the other one where it kind of jumps because we change the scene image rather than rather than bringing in the separate tiles. And under that scene background, yeah, it just changes it. There's there's no kind of drift in, drift out. So it might be, if that annoys me, I might just change it um, and change the tiles. Now the only issue is, of course, is tiles overlapping each other. This tile is currently on top. I don't need to worry about the fact it's hiding other tiles um, at this point. But of course, when I'm actually playing, if I was using a big tile like this and I wanted other tiles to show, I would have to make sure I'm careful with my layer because stop that wind. All right, so I'm going to bring this one to an end. Um, this is pretty much the scene done. I need to do a little bit of tidying up, a little bit of um, brushing up. You don't want to see me do that. But how good is this, the fact that we can use these different images, these different tiles, bring sound effects in. Um, it's still very much focused on what we're saying. Um, these images are supporting that, um, but we're also managing to bring in some lighting. We're bringing in some effects and stuff that's all happening just through these trigger tiles, which is just mwah, it's just really, really nice for this kind of thing. Okie dokie. Right. Um, thank you very much for watching the video. You take care. I'll see you oh, in the next one, whatever that one will be. See ya.